Hi everybody and a big welcome to CDHTV Gameplay! This time as usual, me, Pontus and Redrick are joined up against William. It's all versus one. Otherwise, if you like the music you're currently listening to, Redrick actually made it himself. Link in the description below of the video to actually a longer version if you want to listen to it in an ambient background. We are going Teamer, trying to make infinite mana in a variety of ways with big creatures. Kinnon, maybe Teamer Sabretooth and Dockside, or as you've seen before, this Blazer Kitten and Dockside as well, and then have an outlet like Walking Ballista or uh, something else. Me, I'm playing Mono Black Vargov. So this is a very strange deck. I don't even want to reveal it to my opponents, but I'm playing 43 lands, an extremely low CMC count, and uh, uh, Adnos, don't hit me. I'm uh, casual, I promise. Today I'm playing Emery, Lurker of the Lock. Artifact combos, dramatic reversal combos to make infinite mana and draw a library with one of the baubles, for example. We have Basalt Monolith and a combo with Mesmeric Orb to mill a library. And uh, I hope to get to the point where I get to do some of these interesting lines that I've been brewing for since the release of this commander. Alma seems to be bringing some fringe, fringe shittier lists. I'm bringing Tim Nacrom, uh, one of the more popular fringe lists in CDH. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just your four color soup. It's just good cards, NOS breach, the good stuff. Not actually that fringe. So this verse seven is actually pretty decent. We have a turn one wheel going first, which it's a lot of like high rolling. We could help our opponents, but usually a random seven is worse than like a hand you've mulligan to. And we actually do have like two or three mana left after the wheel. So while it's not the best turn one wheel, like I would prefer to have more mana going for me when, once I wheel, like untapping the next turn. If you draw into some two mana rocks, we're still untapping with at least three mana turn two. So I think this turn one wheel hand is really strong. The only problems are like metal missteps, uh, if they misstep either Dark Rit or the Mana Vaults. But I think this hand is actually strong enough to try keeping. So yeah, let's turn one wheel and see if we draw into some gas. Let's go. Land of return would be a Windswept Teeth and I will fetch. Finding a Scrubland, tapping the Scrubland to cast a Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual resolves. I'll have two black mana floating and cast a Mana Vault. Mana Vault resolves. I'll tap it, floating a colorless, to cast a Arcane Signet. I'll tap Arcane Signet, use a colorless and a black to cast this Wheel of Fortune. My response is... The pass priority over to Rhetoric. See what he says. Now, if I were a unkind player, I'd be like, no, packed. But I'm not going to do that, because that's not what you do right? He just discarded. So you, you know it's being discarded, but uh, well done. I have a pretty good hand, so. My turn one Wheel of Fortune results. Post drawing my hand, I will cast a Mox Opal, but then I will sadly just pass my turn. I will draw a card. Now Pontus did wheel away my turn one commander, but I found a new <laughs> turn one commander actually. So we're gonna play this zero costing creature. This is a zero mana, zero free, and then land drop swamp and cost cooling the weak. Sacrificing this creature and then generating four black using three of those to cost my Vamp Tutor Vargov. And with the last floating black mana, we might as well just throw out a mana vault as well. Fun fact, I'm actually in a better position compared to my opening hand, so yeah, here we go. Pass turn. Draw for turn. Land drop for turn. It's gonna be an island. Casting this mana crypt that I have laying around for two colorless. Cast this Sol Ring. Casting my commander, which now costs one blue mana. ETB on my commander, mill four cards, lion side diamond, island, narset, and a either spell bomb actually going to be relevant this game. Uh, continuing my turn, I will cast this Mishra's bubble. I'm gonna sacrifice Mishra's bubble. I'm gonna take a look at the top card of Pontus Library. Pass after that. Tap up, keep William. You get to draw a card. Well, fellas, the three of you, you're still able to do things on your first turn. Me, not so much. So. I'm going to put this Basalt Monolith into the bin and pass. Oh, no, that's so sad. I'll just, I'll be working on my music, guys. Just let me know. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Go to my turn. Land for turn will be a Morphic Pool. So here we have a couple of ways to play this hand. I think the most consistent way is to actually not cast Humna. We kind of want to cast Humna, both to have a, like a commander in play and to have a creature for the Walking Tents. 
But I think just casting fish, having the mana available to use cards for fish, and also having end step intuition is the stronger line overall. Before having no cards in hand, or no cards in hand, uh, no mana, and probably no interaction means that I just have one blue player to worry about. So going for an intuition line to win the game is probably gonna get there. And we kinda need to respect mons as well. So I think just doing this line, I have interaction up, I can draw some from fish, and worst case scenario, I can still find the interaction of the intuition while burning Savins and Breach. So I, I feel like that's just the best line overall. I would like to develop a team map, but I think just de developing fish and keeping mana up is a better play. So that's what I'm going to do. With fish in play, I'll pass the turn. My turn, draw a card. So we actually have a few options here. Or okay, we, we have one thing we want to do, which is attack, cost, get Adnos to top of library. Next turn, cost Adnos, win the match. Great. However, there are problems or and also options. First of all, uh, there's um, we're playing as blue players. Now, Redrick is out of the game, so that's one less counterspell player in the sports state. But we do have William and Pontus still. So, and there's a fish as well. So if I start like storming with Adnos, which I don't do that much, but there's a chance Pontus just draws into counterspells and interacts with me, especially considering he has like man at the ready. However, we can do something cool here. We can find opposition agent or other cards that could like fiddle with their control board states. But also we could cost Chalice of the Void equals zero, which is gonna hurt them because Emery wanna sit there and like loop Misha's bubble over and over. And Pontus wanna like brain freeze Lions and Diamond Underworld Breach here eventually. So zero Chalice of the Void is actually good versus them, but it hampers me from winning too. I could throw it out to see if they actually have counter spells to just like test the waters a tiny bit. But also I'm struggling with removing it as well. In the end, I think I'm here playing the deck. I think I think I'm gonna go for the Adnos here actually, not putting the Chalice of the Void in play and just putting the Adnos on top of the library. However, I do think that it could be a more correct decision to put Opposition Agent on top of your library, depending on what you need to do here. The Swamp into play. Then we're gonna go to combat, sending Vargov at Pontus. No blocks, take two. But still in combat, we are actually going to activate Vargov, searching my library in a vamp tutorial way. Finding this mysterious card, what could it be, and putting that on top of the library, and then passing the turn, not feeding any fishes. I have a mana creep trigger, I'm gonna roll a die. I eat still, so I take three and draw a card for a turn. Tapping the crypt and the soul ring to cast a one ring. Pontus, you may draw off your fish. I uh, have a one ring ETB. I have protection from everything. I'm going to tap it, add a counter, and try to draw a card off my one ring. Draw. I land a slam for my turn. Tap Emery and uh, target my lion side diamond in my graveyard. Cast my lion side diamond. Pontus, you may draw another card. Draw a card for turn. Pass. <laughs> In your end step, I'll tap three to cast a intuition targeting mons. Uh, intuition resolves, and I'll search up three cards. The three cards I'll find are a Savings Reclamation, a Lionside Diamond, and the Underworld Breach. Mons, how would you like to die? The sad, correct decision here is to give you the Lionside Diamond and cry about my own game ac gamer actions that I didn't make, I guess. Go to my turn, untap, and in upkeep I will pay for fish, but I will not pay for the Mana Vault, so I will take one damage. And then I'll go to draw. Land for turn will be a Plateau. I will cast a Lionside Diamond. And after that, I'll tap a red to cast a gamble. Gamble resolves and I'll find a card. I'm finding this card and discarding a card randomly. Discarding a Toxic Orchard. I'll tap Arcane Signet to cast a Silence. You're just showing off right now. <laughs> I pass. I'm, I'm just playing it correct. Silence resolves. Now that my opponents are silenced, I will crack LED, discarding Deflecting Spot, Born Upon a Wind, Diabolic Intent, and a Brain Freeze. I'll make three white mana and I will tap two mana using the three mana to cast flashback my Savin's Reclamation targeting my LED. LED will come back, Savin's will copy itself and bring back my Breach. I will crack LED for three red. I'll recast LED, exiling a land, a land and a Angel's Grace. I'll crack LED for three blue. I'll use two blue to cast a Brain Freeze. 
exiling a Dark Ritual, a Phantasmal Image, and a Border Phone Win. So from here, I have the loop where I use LED and Brain Freeze to mill myself out. If there was any shenanigans, I will always have three red floating and a deflecting spot in my graveyard. So any like Poseidus or Otavaras, I'm still safe from. So I will repeat this loop until I mill my library out, and then I will cast a Tassas Oracle to win the game. Good game. Yeah, the dice seems to be on my side, and I'm going first again. And hopefully this game won't be as easy. Let's start milliganing again. So this first seven is honestly pretty fine. We, we have some issues. Just one lad, no actually acceleration. I mean, do you have Ragavan? Okay, Ragavan is ex acceleration, but not as much as or as permanent as I would like. And we also have some conflicts in how to play this hand. Like, we could just keep a turn 1 Esper, turn 1, turn 2 Ragavan, but is that worth it on the 7? And we also have some conflicts that are like main plan, except for Esper, is like Oracle, and we would have an Esper in play, which is a problem. So while I could keep this hand, I'm gonna be a bit greedier and mulligan for basically some more mana, or hopefully a draw engine on a lower hand, because we, we can be more greedy in a deck like this. It's amazing. Good decks can mulligan well. It's woof, woof. Go to second seven. This hand would actually be kind of worth considering on a... if I wasn't going first. But since I'm going first, I have actually no colored mana in my hand. And that's something we really want to have. Otherwise, it's really close to turn one Madnos. It's not actually, because we want, we would need like one more black somehow. But yeah, uh, since we don't have the early mana, we'll just... or the colors going first, we'll just middle two, six. This hand doesn't really do anything. You can like Dark with Oppo, which is cute. In this pod, Dark with Oppo is actually pretty good, but Oppo isn't really gonna give me anything until turn two. And it's end of turn two, so it's like straight right before my turn three. And I'm not really willing to just hold Dark with Oppo. I would like, like to develop something, and that's like my only play in this hand. I do like force backup, but like force backup for Dark with Oppo isn't really that impressive. And I have two opponents that kind of don't tutor that much. Like both William and Rhetoric can tutor, of course, but they're, they're not like tutor heavy decks. So I'm not gonna try to just try an Oppo. I'm going for something better on a five. So once again, we're faced with a Gemstone Caverns going first. Always sucks to see, but that's just life. But what this is, is a turn two Rhystic Study. And it's also like a turn three kinda intuition line for a win, I think. And that's definitely good enough for a four. And for a five, for that matter, <laughs> which this is. So yeah, let's just mulligan away the Savins, mulligan away the Gemstone probably, and uh, go for a turn two Rhystic Study. Sounds good. Go ahead with your mulligan rhetoric. So this first seven, I don't want to have like sort of felt memories from the first game, you know, like uh, just thinking they're going to be wood away. Cause I mean, we get fabricate something like mana crypt. We still don't have anything to cast displacer kitten, which is probably the thing that I'm kind of tempted by, but I think it's a bit of a trap. So second seven, it is Ragavan, which lets us sort of exile things from the top of the library. So that could really hurt Mons if I could dash him out on turn one. And last game, I really wanted a little bit of time to play something like uh, Dockside, because as we saw, there was a ton of artifacts. So if there's anything I've learned from the past game, it's that people will be casting lots of artifacts this game, as we can expect from Emery and things of that sort. So I'm going to keep the second seven. All right, let's take a look at the first seven. We do have a Thermal Fish. It's pretty gas, I'm not going to lie. Like, the thing that this struggles with the most, uh, this deck that I play right now, Emery, is that we don't have a lot of ways to get to our draw engines because the deck kind of is dependent on drawing into the different pieces rather than having a very good tutor suite. We do have a lot of like artifact tutors but the artifact tutors are not like really enough to get there usually. So yeah having the Remora turn one going into the Vargot turn uh, I think we're looking pretty good here. Also, my mind traps can be gassed this, this game, probably. I keep my first seven. I have a feeling that the deck is telling me something, that I literally should have casted the Shadows of the Void previous game, because that would have helped out, just like I said, against the Lion's Eye Diamond Pontus was going for. So in this game, we are going to cast the Shadows of the Void turn one. So we begin with basically Yud Lotus, then Mox Amber, Commander, Chalice, and Pass, and we are sitting with like a very good opener with our Commander activation turn 2. So turn 3, we don't have the mana for Adnos, I guess. 
Actually, when I think about that part. This hand is sitting on two mana on turn two. I don't really like that. I would love to swap out a lot, any card here basically for a swamp and we would be golden. Because this uh, Glacial Chasm doesn't produce mana, which means that we are stuck. And then we have to use our commander again to find something that's gonna add the Adnos mana, but we won't get there. And I don't, we're not getting to the opposition agent either. Sadly, we're actually gonna mulligan this hand. We have Imperial Seal, Song of the Damned, together with it actually makes like, set, play this one, so it makes one black mana. Imperial Sea, we don't need a commander. So we're one, two, three, four. We're one mana off for a turn to add Nos, or depending on what we draw, actually. Nah, it's too slow. This is a turn two commander uh, without the mana that we need to basically get there, so... Ah, we're gonna mulligan. Scheming Symmetry, Walking Ballista, Blood Pet. We've had such a great hands recently. This is still too slow. If you compare it to the speed the other opponents are actually able to produce here. So we're gonna mull. We don't have anything. I mean, we don't need much anyway. We just need some fast mana and then the rest can go to the bottom of the library. We can mull really deep actually when I think about it. So let's mull. We have a gemstone cavern. So we have, t we have commander. Turn one by basically tossing the entire hand to the graveyard, more or less. So we're down to four with a gemstone caverns. So we're gonna have two cards in play. Is this doable? So if you just in theory, bottom this, you just need to look at it. Bottom this, bottom this. This is our opener. We're playing 47 lands or 43 in this deck. So if we gemstone caverns, the Isengard, and we Turn one, play Swamp, and we draw a land. We have a turn one commander and three mana. That is gonna be enough to sit and control the game with opposition agents. Like the entire deck is, my my deck is really bad. It's just filled with nothing except op agents and adnos. Those are like the only two cards more or less that actually does something. And honestly, this is like getting there. The difference between this hand and the first seven that we looked at is that this hand will have three mana on turn three and turn two. If we draw land. We've gambled so far. I guess we're going for this crazy stuff. Hoping to draw land. The chance is actually pretty okay. So yeah. Wish me luck. I'm gonna need it. So before this game begins. We are going to pre-game this gemstone caverns. Pitching this land. And I have exactly two cards in my hand. I don't need more to kill you guys. Go ahead Pontus. I, I recommend wheeling right now. I will draw for turn. Land for turn will be a Bansin Meyer, and I will fetch. Finding a Scrubland, tapping it to cast a Soul Ring, and then I will pass my turn. Take my turn, let's draw a card. We will we'll play Training Center. We will play Crumb Mox, exiling this Yeesh, Hyrex Tower Scout. Tap these two to dash Ragavan and I'll attack Mons. Wait, Ragavan is actually really good against this deck because I will never have blockers as my commanders. Oh, okay, this is gonna be annoying. Anyway, you're getting a Everflowing Chalice. I'm actually happy about that because I don't want to draw that. They connected, so I will make a treasure. Last thing I'll do is crack this treasure for a green and cast Mystic, Elvish Mystic. End of my turn, Ragavan goes back to my hand and I pass. All right, take my turn, untap, upkeep, draw. We are going to play an island as my land for turn and cast this Mystic Remora. If that, if that resolves, I'm going to pass my turn. Up to you, Moss. I don't feel so great about this game anymore. Draw a card. Oh, almost. So this is going to look strange and maybe risky considering Pontus could actually wheel. But here's the thing. I have a Swamp in my hand, only one land drop. Then I have a Mox Diamond. So it's either Swamp or Mox Diamond. I could put Mox Diamond into play, pitch, Swamp, and then put Mox Opal into play and pass turn. I don't have enough mana to cast my commander, but if I draw any zero costing artifact or any land, I cast commander next turn. Happy, happy me. But I'm feeding the fish doing that. I literally just could pass turn now, do nothing, and if I draw a land, I still have my commander turn free. So I don't need to cast anything. And the correct play of not casting anything my, is probably a good argument because I'm feeding fish twice here doing the action he has described. However, there's the fact that, that uh, someone could wheel, that Pontus could wheel, or anyone else could wheel, and uh, that would be sad. On the other hand, if someone wheels, the chance of me getting my commander into play is still pretty good, usually. 
Like we just need to draw into a land in a form of ritual to get two mana on next turn, so we should be fine. So in the end, even though it looks strange, I think the correct play here is to not feed the fish and just pass the turn. Go to my turn. In my upkeep, I will cast a, a Lightning Tutor, not paying for fish. A Lightning Tutor resolves and finds a Rhystic Study, surprising nobody. I will go to draw. I will play a Volcanic Island as land for turn. I will tap 3 mana for a Rhystic Study, not paying for fish. Rhystic Study resolves and I will pass turn. Draw a card for turn. Then for turn is a Tropical Island. I will tap Training Center and Chrome Mox. Dash Ragavan once again. Uh, this time I'll attack Pontus for two. And I need to pay for Rhystic, so I will uh, do as such by tapping Elvish Mystic. No blocks, take two. Exiling a Fimage. Made a treasure from Ragavan, and then what I will do from here is tap this and sack the treasure. Cast Thrasios. Not pay for Rhystic, you may draw. I move to my end step, and Ragavan goes back to my end. Other than that, four cards in hand. I have a Mystic Remora trigger. I'm going to pay for my Mystic Remora, and then go to draw. Uh, I'm going to play this Sith of Synoth, and I'm going to pass after that, discarding this Aether Spellbomb. Draw a card! All right, that's what we're doing. Feeding everyone, I guess. No, wait, this doesn't work. Oh, oh this is... Oh. What I can do is feed two people, then pass turn and do nothing. Or feed no one and pass turn. You know what? I'm paying my taxes. I'm not feeding anyone. You, you gotta work for it, guys. I pass turn doing nothing. Go to my turn. Land for turn will be a gemstone caverns. I'll cast a jeweled lotus, not paying for fish. I will crack the Lotus, tap Gemstone Caverns, and exile a Simeon Spirit Guide to cast a Chrome. Sadly, my lands doesn't work together very well, so I cannot cast a Timna here as well. So I will just pass, keep a blocker up for that pesky Ragavan. I want that, that one to hit once. Go ahead, Rutherk. Untap it and draw. Right then, we will tap these two, cast Dockside. Rhystic, you can draw. Dockside resolves Mickey 4 because William has an artifact land. Let's see, I will crack three treasures uh, so that I have a blue remaining as well. And then I will tap these two because I made red from those treasures and I'll cast a Lena. Triggeristic and Chrom. Ah, go ahead. Upkit, I have a Mystic Remora trigger once again. I'm going to tap two and pay for my Mystic Remora. Draw step, draw. Play yet another fish feeding or dockside feeding land. It's an Ursa Saga. Go to discard again. Discard to hand size. Uh, it is going to be this reshape this time. Come on, draw a card. Yeah, that works. That's what we've been waiting for. The feed, the feeding begins. Everyone gets to draw a card, but Bruptoric now, I guess. I mean, we should take actions at the very least. So, casting Mox Diamond, pitching this uh, Swamp. You can both draw cards. Mox Opal. You can both draw cards. And then I'm gonna cast this Dark Sphere that's gonna give me Metal Craft. You can both draw cards. It is very hard to play against Rhystic Study because like, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Like, I can't just sit here and do not. Okay, I could, but that's gonna lose the game. So, we're gonna cast Vargoth, can't play for Rhystic Study, so Pontus gets to draw yet another card. And uh, from here, we are passing the turn. In your end step, I will have effects. I'll tap three to cast the Intuition. It feels like we've seen this before. Yikes. Yeah, I have a response. So I'm gonna show you this Mind Break Trap, targeting the intuition. Uh, I am paying for Rhystic Study. No response to Mind Break Trap, that's fine. Go to my turn. Land for turn will be a plateau. So to start us off, I will tap Volcanic Island to Red Elemental Blast the Mystic Remora, not paying for it. Red Blast resolves, and I'll continue playing my cards. I'll cast a Mana Crypt. I'll tap Mana Crypt for a Felwar Stone. I will tap 3 mana to cast a Pimna. Then I will go to combat. I'll swing Chrome at Monster Last a lot of life, so I'll swing it at him. 4 damage at once. I take 4. Post combat may face to Null Trigger, and I'll pay a life to draw a card. I will cast a Lotus Battle, and then I pass turn. Draw a card for turn. All right, for sort of business, I will tap Elvish Mystic and Tropical Island, as well as Chrome Mox. I will cast Invasion of Akoria for one, targeting William. In response to your Freaks and Dreadnoughts, three mana, having one floating, to cast a Fire Covenant, targeting the Dockside, the Alena, the Elvish Mystic, and the Vorgoth. And I will pay three, six, nine life. All right, Invasion of Akoria resolves, so I'll go find a one drop. And I'm grabbing Tinderwall. I did have plans for 
much more interesting card, uh, Phyrexian Dreadnought, but that didn't happen. So we're gonna cast Training Grounds here. With Rhystic Study, I will I will pay, actually, with the treasure. And then I pass my turn. Break cards in hand. Untap, upkeep, draw. Triggers a saga. I gain a counter. I can now make dudes with my land. Land for turn is going to be this island. I am going to continue by tapping this, this, this. Cast a Rhystic Study. You may draw off of Rhystic. All right, Rhystic resolves. I'm going to go to my end step, and if no further actions, I'm going to discard two hand size. My turn, draw a card. Commander is now expensive. I don't have any actions, pass. Untap, upkeep, roll for crypt, odds is damage, I rolled a 4, no damage. Draw for turn. Land for turn will be a command tower. Then I will move to combat. I'll swing 4 at Rhetoric and 2 at Viliana. No blocks, take 4. No blocks, take 2. I will gain 2 life, but in post combat main phase, Tumnal trigger, and I'll pay 2 to draw 2. Post combat main phase, I will pay white and white to cast a Grand Abolisher, not paying for six study. All right, with Grand Abolisher on the stack, I will sacrifice uh, Tinder Wall, make two red, and activate Thrasios. And that's not helpful right now, so this will go onto the bottom. And neither is that card, but it's an Orcish Lumberjack. I have a Pact of Negation here. I don't have any way of paying for it as of now. However, I do have a Port Upon a Wind in this deck and probably the highest chance of success is not to uh, to interact with this Grand Abolisher, so I'll be able to interact with whatever comes after that and uh, not die to Pontus here. So with that reasoning, I'm gonna put this Pact of Negation on the stack, targeting Grand Abolisher, not paying for Rhystic Study. I will draw for stick, and then I will respond. I will float to Colorless, casting a Tainted Pact in response. Paying for a stake with the colorless. Tainted Pact resolves. Let's start flipping. Dockside, wheel, no, no. Dark Ritual, Esper, Adnos, don't want to offer Adnos, Oppo, City of whatever, Frix Metamorph, Angel's Grace, Diabolic Intent, Vamp Tutor, Swords, Pyroblasts. So, if I choose Pyroblast here, I have to tap out, making it so that I have exactly enough to cast Lotus Petal from my graveyard, and then use that mana to cast Tain Pact. But if Brain Freeze is is above the Lightsaber Diamond, I just get stuck. Meanwhile, if I continue going here, there's five free interaction spells for me to find, versus two cards that I can't find before them. So I think continuing here for a free interaction spell is higher odds overall. So I will go for that line, but I might get punished. I just feel like the Grand Abolisher being still being there is really important when, I'm, when storming through a Rhystic Study. So that's where I'm gonna take the fight. Really not a lot Ragavan, Mana Vault, Fish, Wounds of Teeth, Pact, stop at Pact. Cast the Pact, targeting the Pact, paying for Rhystic, floating in colorless. <laughs> well, you didn't expect Mono Black to do a thing. Well, I didn't expect Mono Black to do a thing, but I'm gonna cast Imps Mischief. I wanna lose zero life, targeting your Pact of Negation, Pontus. Let's change the target of that so you counterspell uh, your own uh, Grand Abolisher there instead. And I'm paying for Pontus Tristics and not Williams. I pass on the mischief. So my pact will counter my Grand Abolisher, giving me a pact trigger, BM. And then I will continue my turn. So I get uh, carried by Mons uh, Imp's mischief, and my pact will fizzle and not die in my upkeep. I'll tap a red mana. Use the colorless loading, cast a Underworld Breach, not paying for Rhystic. Trigger Rhystic and Chrom. I'll draw off Chrom, and then off Rhystic. What the f- <laughs> What is this? <laughs> uh, Underworld Breach will be countered, and I will pass my turn. Wow. Untap. Land for turn is the City of Brass. We will then tap two, dash Ragavan, not paying for Rhystics. Moving to combat, I will attack Mons. I take two and you get a swamp. They are my lands, apparently. Ragavan connects, I make a treasure. Can't cast your land anyways, so I will then... I don't know, we're kind of in the end game, so I'm not really going to worry about the the, the, the Rhystics. Sounds like a meal. I'm going to uh, pay two, or pay one. I'm going to cast Orcish Lumberjack. 
not paying for Rissix. Trigger Chrome as well. Other than that, I have two mana up, two cards in hand, pass turn. So, in my upkeep, I'm gonna tap this island and cast this Mystical Tutor. And you may draw for Rhystic. Find this card with the Mystical Tutor, put that on top, and then I draw for turn. Going to my first main phase, triggering Ursa Saga. I'm gonna hold priority on the trigger, tap this for a colorless, and then I go search for a card. I'm going to find this card with my Ursa Saga, and then I go to sorcery speed. Land for a turn is gonna be this City of Traitors. I'm gonna proceed by cast this mana crypt, not paying for Rhystic Study. You may draw. I draw for Chrome as well. Casting this Felwar Stone, you may draw off of Rhystic. I'm gonna carry on by tapping this Soul Ring, this for blue, this for blue, and I'm going to cast a Tesseret the Seeker and not paying for Rhystic Study. All right, I'm going to minus two on Tesseret the Seeker. So Tesseret the Seeker is gonna find this Isochron Scepter. Imprint this dramatic reversal. I'm then gonna tap my City of Brass to activate the Isocron Scepter, putting a copy of a dramatic reversal on the stack. Not paying for Rhystic Study. I will respond to this. I will Force of Will pitching a Mystical Tutor targeting the dramatic reversal. Not paying for Rhystic Study. I'm going to respond. Tap the Sita sign up for a blue. I'm gonna cast this Fluster Storm. All copies gonna target the Force of Will. Uh, you may draw for Rhystic. No response to the Fluster Storm. The Fluster Storm may count for my Force of Will. But still in response to the dramatic reversal, I will Pay two to Psychrift the Isaac Conceptor. Not paying for a I have no response to the Psychrift. It resolves. It's gonna bounce the Isaac to my hand. Back to my final iteration of Dramatic Reversal on Sack. Dramatic Reversal resolves. Gonna stay in exile and untap my Felwarstan Mana Crypt and my Soul Ring. Cast a Emery. Paying for Rhystic Study with ETD. I mail for it. It's gonna be a Worm, a Island, a March of Swirling Mist, and a Swan Song. They go to my graveyard. Yeah, as my final game action, I'm gonna play this Chromox. Paying for Rhystic with the Colorless Floating. Imprint is gonna be a Fabricate. And then I pass my turn. Draw a card. Yeah, that math checks out. I'm gonna cast this Dark Ritual to generate free red mana. You can both draw cards to cast my command a second time for five mana you can both draw another card again and Chrome can draw a third card then I pass the turn untap upkeep I'll roll for crypts all this damage I roll the two no damage then there's a pack trigger and I'll choose to die except no <laughs> I will pay for it and then I will draw for turn land for turn will be a exotic orchard I will then have one mana floating to cast a Teferi, Time Reveler. I'll pay for the Rhystic with my mana floating. My response is going to be casting this Fierce Guardianship. You may draw off a Rhystic. I'll draw. I will respond through Fierce with my own Fierce, and you may draw. Response to the second Fierce, I will tap these two losing a life to activate Thrasios. All right, let's get nuts. I'm going to Fierce. <laughs> I'm going to Fierce Teferi. <laughs> You can both draw from Rhystics. I will deflecting spots, targeting that fairs. Force negation, exiling intuition, target the Teferi, pay for Rhystic study. I'll draw for Chrome. I will respond to the force negation by casting a Fluster Storm, not paying for Rhystic study. Fellas, 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 I should have brought the popcorn and some spice, put some cayenne. I, I, I don't have anything else. So Fluster Storm will, will counter the Force Negation. SWAT will redirect the fears to William's fears. Uh, so the fear, and then my fears will fizzle, and then my Teferi resolves. I will minus three Teferi to bounce the Rhystic Study. I'll draw a card. I'll cast a Mox Opal. I'll cast a Chrome Mox imprinting a Boromir. I'll tap Mox Opal to cast a Reanimate targeting the Dockside in the Rhetoric's Graveyard. I'll lose two life and make ten treasures of the Dockside. Then I'll use three of them to cast a Savin's Reclamation targeting my Breach. Uh, with Breach in play, I'll use two of them to cast a Thassa's Oracle. And then in response to Tazza Circle ETB, I'll tap two mana to cast the Tainted Pact from my graveyard. Tainted Pact will resolve, and I'll exile until I have uh, three cards left in the library to account for any shenanigans. And then the ETB will resolve, and I will win the game. Good game. Yeah, so we got there, even though William tried to spite pact us, which seems to be a trend on this channel. It wasn't. Hello. It wasn't, though. <laughs> 
no, no, no. That, 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 that's like a perfect example of when you should just pact like optimally to like increase your chances of winning. Like even if you didn't interact, the, you are kind of safe to assume that I have something in that position, in my opinion. Which I did, it's just you had more. Well, Imp's mischief was only doing something because of the existence of other pacts and things. Yeah. Yeah, it was also the case that I had, I was sitting on a Fluster Storm as well, yeah. so if Storm can, Count was high enough, I could use one of the copies to counter my own pact and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. be safe on that. But uh, yeah, it worked out in a better way than expected that time. Not to say that you're safe from any spite pacts or any toxic <laughs> let's draw this game type pipe, uh, pacts from me, but uh, this time there was more to it than that. But I think that people are holding back and considering the fact that this is going to be a spike pact when truly there's a lot of things that can actually happen and this yeah. the, the craziest stuff actually happened this time yeah, yeah for, sure. for sure sure thanks everyone for watching and we will see you in the next gameplay episode bye 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 <laughs>